everybody and welcome to another video from kdtech.co. In today's episode we're going to cover uh, high dynamic range photography using an Android cell phone. Basically uh, people are always down on the quality of their cell phone uh, cameras, they're arguing about it. I'm going to show you what you can do with actually a fairly uh, lesser quality camera. You can actually produce photos like this. So I'll show you the steps, how to do it. Uh, basic photo app, you don't need any extra apps, so stay tuned. Okay, so basically we're learning how to use our basic Android cell phones to take high quality photos in a format called HDR. So a lot of people might be asking what is HDR. If you're not really familiar, it's high dynamic range photography. Uh, basically it's a trending new way to take photos. Um, some people have been doing it for a while, but it's really starting to catch on all over. They're actually building it into certain cameras now. Um, basically you're taking multiple photos of the same exact frame, whatever you choose to take a photo of, but you take multiple ones at different light levels. Then after that, you combine them all, make them into one photo. And yes, the Android phone can do this, and then you take the photos to the light levels, bring them onto your computer, and then you use some simple editing software to put them together and make one photo, and that brings out all the depth, color, and all the details. Um, I prefer to take photos, HDR photography, the uh, manual way, which again is like I described. Uh, basically, I go up, I take the photo, I change the settings, take the photo, change the settings, take the photo on the phone. Um, some options include uh, press the button once and it'll take all three photos at different light levels. That's fine too, but I don't like the HDR apps per se. Some are good, some not so much because I like to then take the photos and manually edit them myself. Uh, so from there basically we'll go into what you'll need. Any uh, basic Android phone uh, with the standard camera app. Um, the normal standard camera app has the ability to uh, give you a kind of a slide out menu on the left hand side. You press that and you'll see what is called exposure value. That's the lighting levels. Um, usually it is plus or minus two. So you'll start at zero, which is basically normal or it's normal setting. And then you can let more light in or remove more light, make it a little darker. Uh, next, you're gonna need to have uh, maybe a couple pieces of software, at least one. Uh, the one that I suggest is Photomatix. Uh, Photomatix is HDR photography, basically. I mean, it's an HDR. Uh, app for Mac or Windows and it takes your, your uh, photos you've taken and layers them together for you and then it gives you a whole lot of options to adjust. We're going to go into detail. Uh, I'll show step-by-step -step screenshots of everything and how to adjust everything so it'll get you going so you can start doing this yourself. Photomatix allows you to download the software indefinitely uh, for trials uh, except for they put their little ink blot of photo matrix very subtly throughout your photo until you pay for the application, which at the time of this video uh, was just under $100 uh, for me, well worth it and fairly inexpensive compared to other software that's out there for photography. Um, the other one, another one that you can use uh, is Photoshop Elements, and you can use Photoshop in general to do HDR. I don't. I take my HDR photography and process it through Photomatix and uh, then from there I put it into Photoshop and I clean it up uh, if need be. If there's artifacts in there or something from the lenses that aren't natural, um, I don't like to add stuff, but if it's not natural, I'll remove it. And then generally speaking, this is a difficult task because you're going to need to hold the phone steady for all three shots or have it on a tripod. In my case, a lot of times uh, I just come across the shot and so I need to take it by holding the phone still. Uh, that will cause you to have uneven edges sometimes of the three photos that you take or four photos, whatever you end up taking. And when you do that, you're going to get this really nice high quality photo but all these uneven edges. Photoshop has very simple cropping um, so you can cut those off and make it a nice square or whatever size photo you're looking for so then you can print it. Um, 
and that's pretty much it from here. We're going to go ahead and go into uh, hands-on step-by-step. All right, from here we're going to go over, click on some photos that I have pre-set up. Got three of this uh, area down in uh, Montana. Go ahead and select them all. Select that you want to open them up with Photomatix. And then uh, merge for HDR processing. That's the option you want. Hit OK. Make sure you got the three lined up there that you wanted. Hit OK. Here you can adjust things to make it work for whatever's best for you. Um, aligning sources and removing ghosting. That happens. You're going to need to do both of those things when uh, you take these photos if you're not on a tripod. Um, basically, it takes a second for them to align and merge. Uh, it depends on the processor speed of your computer and then also the size of the files and actually how complicated the files are for the computer to process. Um, just wait patient for just a sec here, it'll finish up. All right. Um, from here, once it populates, uh, you're going to go ahead and you'll see your image. Uh, you're going to want to check it out and look for any artifacting. Um, looking really close at it, you can see that maybe some of the bristles and the branches on the tree don't quite line up perfectly since you took it without being on a tripod. So you're going to want to use the tool to circle those areas. Uh, oops, got to start over here. Uh, you're going to want to head and circle the areas that you want in this case. Uh, the tree is the focal point, so I want to make sure that the tree is correct. Uh, you can go around and roughly highlight it. You don't have to be perfect with it. Scroll all the way around the tree. Try to get all the branches in there. Uh, this works for any of the objects, even people. Get all the way around to the bottom. And then there's a lot of detail in this little bit of brush here, so circle around that a little bit. And then you right click and you just select it as ghosted. You can preview it, take a look at it. You can see that it really changed the colors already, uh, brought out a lot of the detail. And then you go ahead and extract it for uh, ghosting information. Again, another little bit of a process depending on the speed of your computer. And then it's going to finish the merging process for HDR. On a side note, uh, I would like making these videos for everybody. I give them away for free. I buy all this equipment myself. Uh, the advertising over the Google videos and uh, advertising on my website, uh, link throughs basically is how I support all my stuff so that I can keep making more videos. And popularity helps me to make more videos as well. It keeps me up in the numbers, so I appreciate any subscribers and any likes if this video helped you out. Alright, uh, we're just about done here with uh, the merging for the HDR. Uh, after this is over, uh, I throw a little bit of credits up at the end of my videos. Uh, if you wait after the credits, I'll scroll through and give you uh, a series of other photos that I've taken and some links to some really great uh, uh, famous HDR people and some other information so you can uh, further explore. Okay, our image has popped up. Uh, you can see it's really dark, so you're going to click Tone Mapping. You'll see a setup populate on your left. Um, how my, all, this, all these different little boxes appear on my screen is because I chose to make them this way. You can set yours up however you like inside of Photo... It's Photomatix, technically. I keep saying Photomatix. But uh, there's different sizes for viewing. Uh, it, it'll process and refresh to different sizes. And then, of course, there's the zoom options and stuff of that nature. Um, uh, basically, uh, we can go ahead and look around at the different uh, scrolling strengths. These are all different settings. Some of the names are kind of made up from the company itself, and some of them uh, correlate directly with words that real pro photographers use. But 
you go ahead and play around with all of these. Uh, the primary top ones are the ones I use the most. Uh, the strength, the color saturation, luminosity, and uh, detail contrast. Uh, it allows you to make black and whites. It allows you to uh, bring them all out. And then, of course, there's all the preset ones. And whatever you finish at, however you finish adjusting all of yours, if that is something you like, the software, at least on my Mac, will remember um, what my last settings were. And so when I bring up a new series of photos, uh, you'll be all ready to go. But basically, I've taken three different light level photos. Uh, you can take four, you can take seven, you can actually adjust one photo. But in order to bring out all the detail, you do the different exposure value, and that gives you uh, details in the background that you may not have gotten otherwise, or details in the foreground, or details kind of in the middle. Um, and then when you put these together, these adjustment tools on the left allow you to focus the attention on those details, which in this case, the centerpiece is the tree for me. I like bringing the white point up as high as I can so that I can then bring the black point up. Uh, what that does, it allows detail basically to come out again. I like to bring the detail contrast all the way up with the black point. Smoothing highlights will change a lot of things. You'll see the sky adjusting there. You basically got to play with it because depending on your type of photo, it actually will affect one thing or the other more um, based on the individual photo versus smoothing highlights doesn't always adjust just the sky. So you got to kind of pay attention to that. Um, from there, you click Process. Uh, it'll go through uh, what's called tone mapping. Uh, that's all the adjustments. It's basically making it one single photo. Now again, like I said, the photos aren't going to be perfectly aligned because I didn't take them on a tripod. I did it pretty quick. Uh, you can lean against another object. Uh, you can balance your phone on something, do things like that. Once it's finished processing, it's going to populate your photo in its uh, Photomatic's finished format. Well, from there, I like to drop it into uh, Photo Elements. So I have it set up so that when I save it, at the bottom, it'll say Save It and then Open With, and in my case, I selected Photoshop Elements. Uh, we'll go through that right here. Save it, we'll give it a name. Uh, put it back in that folder. Something that I can remember to work with and is easy. I'll just name it tree. Uh, JPEG is what I prefer to shoot in. And then Photoshop Elements is what I want to open it in next. So it's saved it now. So that image is actually saved. And then you can make another copy of it if you want to work with it and try things with Photoshop Elements without destroying your original image that you've already done. In my case, I don't mind. I'm going to work with the same image. <coughs> That's just another photo that I was working with, which uh, got, got a lot of work to do on it yet, actually. Uh, sun shots are pretty challenging. Uh, I, do, I do like those and have had good results. Okay, from here, uh, you can see basically all the details. Uh, normally, you can go in and clean things up and do different things, but the lower right-hand corner is typically the area where the most problems are. You can see a little bit of overlapping and blurriness and there's a gap, there's a white line there. That's where the photos aren't lining up correctly. So you go and select the cropping tool and then I highlight the entire picture and then I zoom in here and I pick up the edges uh, of what I want to cut off and it'll let you see them before you cut them off because you want to crop only really once. Um, over time, I understand through pro photographers that this can deteriorate the photo. Once you've got the photo shaped the way you want it, you go ahead and click Save, JPEG again. I've got it uh, at the highest quality level. It already has the tree, but I'm replacing it because I don't want that original anymore. Uh, maximum quality for me because I like how it prints. And uh, there we go. Uh, it'll save here, and I'll drop you in to show you a little comparison of what we started with now compared to what we have. Uh, we'll close out all this. And open up the new image. Now, this image I didn't size perfectly, so if you try to print it at, say, uh, any, any of the 
one hour places it, it isn't going to be a perfect five by seven or what have you I didn't shoot it that way you would have to adjust your photo accordingly based on the size that you want the quality of this photo uh, the largest I've been able to successfully blow them up where I'm still satisfied with them really is 20 by 30 but that's pretty tough sometimes uh, you start to see uh, the flaws in the photography uh, here's the uh, other one of the original stock photos at a very light level uh, you can see there that there's quite a difference uh, and that's pretty much it for those uh, well Thank you very much for watching. I hope that uh, you picked up something from this and uh, are maybe a little more satisfied or a little more eager to use your cell phone camera now, even if it isn't one of the highest in models out there. Something to look for in the future that's coming on all markets is the Samsung Galaxy S3. That particular phone has a camera built into it, uh, very comparable to the iPhone high quality. It's a similar lens set and processor, but the software is different. Thanks again. I appreciate any subscribers, any like button hits. Uh, all that will help motivate me to make more videos. Uh, stay tuned for the credits here and then uh, some extra shots afterwards and I'll give you some links to go further your knowledge on HDR photography. Thanks a lot.